again, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus, drydocks.com, and I've got a little uh, tip uh, and a little how-to for you today, and it deals with connecting the control surfaces in the rear of your submarine. Now, what we're going to be working with here today uh, is the prototype build for an upcoming set of 3D files uh, for the Russian Bori class submarine. You can see the parts uh, laid out here in, in semi-assembled format. And uh, what I've got in my hands here is the uh, stern section with all of the control surfaces uh, installed. So I've got some brass control rods that run through each one of them. And you can see on the inside what those look like as they stick inside. Now the challenge um, with connecting these rear surfaces is if you make one shaft that goes through the middle, it also happens to go specifically through the drive shaft of your propeller. So uh, we need to bypass that propeller shaft. Now um, we do offer at the dry docks this product and this is a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a yoke that allows you to make a little U that allows the drive shaft to go through the middle. Ordinarily, I would use that, but in this particular case, uh, I didn't make the shafts long enough, and so they're too wide for this pre-made yoke to work. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own yoke, and uh, we'll run through what you need. So if we take a look what we've got here, we need some soldering supplies. I'm gonna use some silver solder uh, and some liquid flux um, you're going to need your uh, propane torch. I've got a, a small torch here. A piece of uh, aluminum tubing. And it's important that this is aluminum uh, when we solder because then the solder won't stick to it. If you use brass, you're going to solder everything to it. It'll all be one piece and that would be terrible. Um, the other thing you're going to need are two 1 8 inch plated wheel collars. And you can see I've got them situated on there right now. And then I've also bent uh, the connecting piece of brass rod, and that's going to sit on top just like that. So um, what we're going to do, I am going to uh, prep this by pre-tinning the wheel collars with a little bit of solder, uh, and then we'll get to assembling it. All right, uh, if we zoom in a little bit closer here, you'll see what I've got started. I've got these, uh, these plated wheel collars sitting in place. Both set screws are oriented in the same direction, which is important, and I've pre-tinned them with a little bit of silver solder. I've also got some liquid solder on the brass, so it's all ready to go. So all I'm going to do is um, set this in place, uh, heat it up, and in theory that solder should flow right onto the brass, just like that. So now we've got uh, our um, connector and you can see it swivels perfectly around that aluminum um, rod so we can just literally give it a little um, wiggle here in theory and uh, pull the whole thing off. All right now what we need to do is uh, create uh, a little horn off of that yoke so that you can connect your uh, linkage from your servo so you have something to push and pull against to actuate the control surfaces. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of uh, flat stock, brass flat stock. I'm gonna drill a 1 8 inch hole. All right, now that I got my uh, hole in there, I'm just gonna slip this over the shaft. And uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of liquid flux. I'm gonna keep this in place. I'm gonna twist this up a little bit so that it Use gravity to help me out there. Safety first, glasses on, and let's apply a little bit of silver solder. There we go. So that solder flowed all the way around the wheel collar and to that uh, connecting rod. Cool it down a little bit. And again, did not fuse to that a piece of uh, aluminum. So now we've got uh, an arm. I'm gonna grab my cutoff 
side cutters here and we're gonna be about a half of an inch now all we need to do is uh, drill some 16th inch holes round that off and uh, probably end up having to uh, to bend this in so that uh, that curvature of the hull um, allows it to actuate but now we've got a fully built um, yoke for our rear control surfaces. All right, uh, everything was going so well, I thought I would just keep on going. Um, I've installed that, uh, that yoke, and you can see my control surfaces. These are the, the um, dive planes, rear dive planes. Uh, and this is what the inside looks like when it's uh, functioning. And that's gonna bypass the drive shaft. So now what I would need to do is I need to uh, do the same thing for the rudders, top and bottom, and uh, I'm going to utilize the pre-made linkage horns. Uh, these are nylon, and you basically just uh, glue in, after you rough up the perimeter, wheel collars. Um, so those are just going to slip um, onto those uh, shafts, those control shafts. And one thing that I wanted to show you, um, I usually connect these uh, with, a, with a simple Z-Bend. And uh, a tool for that, which makes life a lot easier, is a, is a Z-Bend tool. So as a little hint, um, or, a, or a tip, I guess you could say, if you do a lot of models, uh, you can invest in one. So you basically just clamp it in there, give it a little squeeze, and now you've got a perfect Z-Bend in your part. And uh, I'm probably going to have to drill this out so that it fits properly, but um, that's going to get put in now before I put them in uh, and then this is going to slip up and bolt down so uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I've gone ahead and drilled out that hole I've got that pushed in so basically uh, it just kind of goes on like that and that's going to control the uh, rudders um, and you can elect to put them in like this or like this depending on what the best setup is. Sometimes uh, I like to do it so that the uh, bump the wheel collar is up closest to the hull and that way it gives a little bit of spacing for that uh, linkage horn. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, slip it on, bolt it down, and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, we've got this all finished up. Let's take a look inside. You can see those two linkage horns uh, in there and the um, arms, those linkage rods, uh, extend forward and then I simply soldered them together. Now, uh, as I move the, uh, the single rod, it actuates both the upper and the lower um, rudder together, um, making for one single connection to the watertight cylinder. Now, typically I like to build in adjustability. Um, so you'd have like a slide with a collar that allows you to adjust it. But in this particular case, both of the rudders are friction fit on the shaft, which means uh, with a little bit of pressure, you can twist them on the shaft so that you can maintain perfect uh, vertical alignment between the two of them. So again, adjustability is exceptionally important, um, but there's multiple ways of going about it. So there you go, completed um, linkages for this uh, Bori class submarine. Um, see if I can grab my, here we go, and you can see there's the uh, prop in there, and uh, you can now see that uh, there is no interference, it uh, doesn't get hit, even in full deflection of the dive planes, so uh, in theory, we're good to go. There you go. Two different ways to connect your uh, rear control surfaces together. The do-it-yourself uh, version. And uh, this probably took me five minutes um, or the pre-made version. So take your choice. Uh, pick the one that works best for you. Hope that helps you. Uh, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus, drydocks.com. Catch you next time.